All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. And today we are talking all about scouting. So what I wanna do is put together a little multi-part series. I wanna show you what I would do if I was going in completely blind to a new area. Now, specifically, this is gonna target kind of a high level approach of urban hunting, but this would also work in a rural area as well. But most importantly, this is gonna show you how I would approach a brand new area and specifically how I'm using the Spartan Forge app to go about scouting a new area. So this is gonna be a super high level overview. Uh, I partnered up with the Seek One guys and we have a incredibly detailed step-by-step -step, over 20 hour master course where we really document the ins and outs of how we're going about the you know picking the exact property. This is just a high level overview to show you how I scout an area, how I pick spots and how I go in, and specifically how I use the Spartan Forge app to locate those spots. And then I'm gonna do another video after this that shows you boots on the ground, what I'm looking for once I've identified those properties, gotten permission on them, what I'm looking for and how I pick the exact tree that I'm hunting from, prep the tree and go about killing deer there. So for the purpose of this video, uh, we're gonna use Greensboro, North Carolina because I don't hunt there. And that way I'm not showing you all the pins uh, that I have in my area here on my own Spartan Forge app. So if you hunt Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope that these spots aren't ones that you're picking. But uh, so let's hop into the app here and let's show you how I find my spots and how we go about scouting. All right, so here we're looking at Greensboro. So generally what I'm looking for is areas that will hold deer. And obviously that sounds kind of dumb, uh, but, but what we're really trying to key in on are those pinch points or funnel areas where deer can travel unobstructed. Deer are not dumb, especially urban deer. They wanna survive. They're gonna figure out where they can go to avoid human interaction and survive right they need food they need cover they need water and part of the year they're going to want to rut first things first you need to get your app set up so once you're on the satellite image all you have to do is just swipe with your thumb across the little compass rows on the bottom and that's going to bring up all the different apps now you'll see the new lambda map layer and this is really cool because the lambda map layer allows you to pick and choose a lot of custom features on the app that you wanna see. So right away, you'll notice the date wheel down at the bottom. If you click on the date, you can cycle through all these different historical images. I find that incredibly useful when I'm looking at a property. I wanna see when something was cut or when something changed or if there was anything that happened on a nearby property that might alter deer movement. These historical images are fantastic. Also. I like to use this in different times of the year to be able to either identify in the winter time once all the trees don't have any cover on them. Maybe I'll go in and try and uh, find little pockets of green that I know are going to hold deer. Or maybe I'll know that if there aren't pockets of green, then there might not be a ton of bedding there. So ultimately, I'm going to take that and use that historical imagery and try to find images that don't have any green up leaves on them. It just helps me see what's going on in the woods. Also, you're gonna notice on this app, when you zoom in here, you can literally see the trails on the ground. You can look and pick the exact tree that you wanna hunt. The, the detail in these photos is just insane. I mean, absolutely insane, the detail that you get on this app. You, you do not get that anywhere else. Uh, so next, what I'm gonna do is once I've picked a date on here, where there is no greenery on the trees, the next thing I'm gonna do is hit this little gear icon there and that's gonna pull up your Lambda map settings. So what I like to do is turn the hybrid overlay on. I'm gonna to toggle the opacity on that down just a little bit so I can still see what's going on. But I like to see the structures that are on a property and also the roads. And the next thing I do is I turn on the trails, I'm turning on public land, I'm turning on private land and the contours. So I wanna have all those on. So next we'll see here, 
boom, we got that on. We can see waterways. We can see public land here. Um, that's just going to help me identify where things are. So once I pick a spot and I'm looking down on it, I want to try and find travel corridors with pinch points on them for deer. And again, we spent about 20 hours detailing how we go about doing this. But basically, if you think about it at a high level, you know, where would water flow if the water are the deer, right? And so that means looking for, for connecting chunks of timber or things that are connecting. Uh, and the easiest way to find those are to find barriers or major restrictions to deer movement. So here we have a big lake, right? And I'm going to zoom in on this lake and I can immediately see, you'll see with the crosshairs here, this finger of woods up and down it. And I can zoom in on that and I can see that this is owned by a homeowners association. So this homeowners association, this to me is primo, especially with this Creek down in here. I know with, with the houses on either side of this, that deer are going to be traveling right along this Creek bed. I also know that with all those homes around, I'm going to have multiple points of access. So for me, the main things that I want to do is identify properties to go start knocking on doors and getting permission on. But secondly, I'm always thinking about how am I going to access those spots? It doesn't do any good to have permission on a spot that you can't access. So I'm going to do a long press here and I'm going to drop a pin. Now for me, what I like to do is I'll put a gate there and I like to do yellow. So that is telling me that that is a, a yellow area. Now, um, you guys can drop pins however you want, but map organization is really key on figuring out how you want to organize your pins. Just make sure that you're consistent across the board. So a yellow gate for me always means this is something that I want to try. Now, and we'll get into later in the app uh, some cool new features that Spartan Forge has come out with that really, really helps when you're getting permission. But So all of this here... For me, with that one yellow pin, I'm going to go there and I'm going to drive around. I'm going to look around. But where I drop that yellow pin is where I'm really interested in hunting. So I know that I could slip in kind of behind this house here and get in back here, right where there are multiple areas for the deer to come in and out of, multiple arteries for deer travel. That's a really, really, really good spot there. And then moving to the northeast, I love this other chunk now this is a different homeowners association, so I'm gonna drop a pin there. Again, I'm gonna do my yellow gate. And I'm gonna hit save. So that's another spot that just looks fantastic to me. And I'm just gonna go around the map and I'm gonna look for these arteries or fingers that I think deer are gonna travel in. Um, I love spots that don't get a lot of human pressure this area might, you know, and, and we could very well get out there and see, oh my gosh, people are using this common ground a lot. It, it might be totally, totally worthless to hunt. Uh, or it might be fantastic, but I know that the deer are going to be traveling through there a lot. Now moving northwest of there, I see another chunk. Now this is owned by the city of Greensboro. This might be a park. We're going to drop a pin there and try to see what's going on with that. Whoopsie. Uh, that again looks pretty promising to me. I love these areas where it's obvious that deer are going to travel between those houses to avoid human interaction. I really love the fact here going forward that we have private property that backs up there and we have this lake. This to me, along with some of this greenery, just looks absolutely killer. So looks like there's a tree fort right here. And then we have these parcels. So I'm just going to drop a pin right in the middle here. And I know just personally that that means for me, once I'm driving around, that's going to help me figure out what houses I actually want to knock on the door of. Um, and it, it's not going to be all of them. I'm going to make a point to try and pick the best one or two and go get permission on those. And then once I'm in the backyard looking around, if I see any concentrated deer sign in a different spot, obviously I'm not trespassing, but maybe I've noticed, oh, over there looks way better once I have boots on the ground. 
I'm going to make a point to go over there as opposed to just sticking with where I have. That being said, though, if I find a spot that um, looks better, then I'm going to stick with that one. So again, these long finger parcels here, these look awesome. Uh, this one looks really good to me. I like having these kind of inside corners where I know that there are going to be multiple confer converging hubs of, of deer travel. So that to me is a primo spot. That looks really good. Then I'm going to zoom back out change the date by accident and I'm just going to keep looking at other spots so if I look up here there's another giant giant lake and I'm just going to look for more fingers of property and I think a lot of people try to find giant chunks of property I'm not into that uh, I want to find the right piece of property not just the biggest ones so this to me looks phenomenal here that's a homeowners association. This is killer. This would be one of the, the better spots that I'd be looking towards here. And being able to cycle through the dates of these photos, as well as being able to literally get as tight as possible and pick the actual tree that you want to hunt is amazing. I mean, they have just, the resolution of this is just out, out of this world. So I'll literally spend hours diving into properties and dropping pins just like that and I'm not marking every single property I'm just marking ge generic areas that I want to focus on from there I'm going to drive out and I'm going to get some some cruising around windshield time on these spots and trying to find um, the right spot to be in but basically I'm looking for those travel corridors and I'm also looking for edge so let's see if we can find an example of that in here um, I mean, here's a good example of one. I don't know if this would be, so this is a school, probably unlikely that you could hunt there, but just as an example, you can see where there's, you know, looks like a baseball field on one side or some, some type of football field, maybe a track there. Um, you know, the deer are going to obviously walk right down the middle of this to get to these two connecting chunks. And so here you see a city of Greensboro. So this would be a great spot to hunt. This is, I'm going to drop a pin here and maybe I'd get, try and get permission from the city of Greensboro. And if I call the city of Greensboro and found that they were receptive to hunting, then I might try and target areas uh, that they owned. So again, here's another spot with a road by it. You know, roads are, are just as good of a barrier as a pond or lake or houses. So that's going to confine deer movement. Um, Just poking around one more spot. Areas like this right here where there are houses that are butted up, these are great areas to hunt as well um, because deer are going to travel through there. So I might find some of these bigger lots with a little bit of pockets in there. And you see City of Greensboro. So let's say that the city ends up not allowing me to hunt. Well, I might get permission then on one of these properties here where I see that there's some greenery, there's a creek bed in there, and I know that there's a large chunk of timber just south of there that's owned by now an area that I've determined in this example doesn't allow me to hunt. So this would be a great spot. So I'd probably try to get permission here, drop a camera, and then try and see when and where deer are, are using it. Um, once I have identified these properties, I've used the pin system that I've determined. I've picked the right date on here uh, where there's a date where there's there's no greenery on the trees. I've identified spots that have good access, etc. I'm going to go out there and get some windshield time. Once I find a spot that looks good and I get permission, this is my favorite feature of the new app. I'm able to literally come in and let's say I got permission here on Glenda Smith. I can click on their name and I can go on this property access tab to conditional or permitted and I can hit apply. And now it's going to drop a green box here where I've gotten permission. So let's say I got permission on all of these spots. I'm able to literally just hit save and apply the areas that I know I have permission on. And boom. And what's really cool about this is if any of the names 
change once I have permission on here, the app is going to change the color of that so it alerts me to know, hey man, you might not have permission on here anymore. You know, you need to either reach out to the new owner or at least figure out what's going on. So this to me is super, super, super cool. And let's say, you know, I knocked on this guy's door and got a no. I can put no access on there and it'll turn red and I'll know that, hey, that guy's not cool with it. Or maybe, you know, this property, uh, the Roods, they gave me conditional access saying, you know, it's a maybe or I can only recover deer there. But this is going to give me a really nice snapshot of knowing where I have access. And, and this allows me to see very easily on a map the spots that I'm allowed to hunt versus the spots that, that I'm not allowed to hunt. Um, I absolutely love that feature. I think it's great. So hopefully this is a helpful way for you to see how to take the Spartan Forge app and how to dive into a new area and identify the areas that you want to hunt. So the first thing, the first step that you're going to take into hunting is finding where to hunt. You obviously can't just throw a blanket out and hunt everywhere. So once you identify these pinch points or the, the what look to be travel corridors, the next step is to drive around, get some windshield time, and then identify some spots, knock on doors, get permission. Now that you've gotten permission, you can mark it down in the app and you're good to go. So hopefully that's helpful. If you haven't downloaded the Spartan Forge app, download it, check it out. You will not be disappointed. You can use the code URBAN, save a little coin, or don't. I really don't care. Uh, but hopefully that's helpful. If you really want to have a deep dive into how I scout properties into this super, super minute detail, feel free to check out the Hunt Urban and Seek One masterclass that we did uh, with the Seek One guys. We spent a ton of time working on it and we put over 20 hours of content out there, both written and audio, and we're continuing to put more um, information in there. We also host a once a month class or a live Q&A where we sit down and, and talk through a topic. So it's worth checking out um, if you're interested in that. Otherwise, stay tuned. We have another video coming out where we're now going to go out and I'm going to do boots on the ground and show you what I'm looking for to pick the tree to hunt in and access points and how I mark it on my Spartan Forge app. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and make sure to check out part two of this series where we're going to go get boots on the ground and show you the next steps in this. So thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. We'll see you guys soon.